The sun continues to fire off these mini solar storms that bring us brief aurora shows if you know when and where to look. And a southern coronal hole finally gives us a promise for some sustained fast wind. Those stories and more in the news this week. Despite being pretty flare quiet, the sun has been extremely active over the past couple weeks. It's been spitting off lots of little mini solar storms and some filament eruptions too, like this gorgeous one that occurred on the 9th. This one should be going kind of northeast of us on go past by Earth around the 13th. But we've had a lot of other eruptions, some of them Earth directed, some of them not, like this gorgeous one that spit off just yesterday and is now headed toward the Spitzer spacecraft. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we've been well below the M-flare threat level for quite some time now. We actually have had a few uh, active regions that look like they were showing signs of life, but as soon as they showed signs of life, they die back down again. So it's kind of kept us popping uh, flares right around the C-class level, and that's going to continue for the indeterminate future. So you amateur radio operators should be very, very happy. We won't have any uh, M uh, radio blackouts to report or anything that looks like it's going to cause us any trouble over the next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've kind of been all over the map. We've had just enough activity to keep us on our toes. Like back on February 3rd, we actually reached storm conditions for just a short period of time and then went back down to the quiet conditions and again popped back up right around the 7th and the 8th to so have a little bit of a mini solar storm hit us there and again popped us on, up on the 9th for just about three hours and then back down. These are because of the mini solar storms that we've been getting that have been Earth directed. So Aurora pops around and just stays for a short period and if you know when and where to catch it, then you can do so and get some beautiful shows, but it just hasn't been anything long lasting. The nice thing is that we do have a chance for some sustained fast wind coming at the end of the week that could pop us back up around uh, storm level and keep us there for a little bit longer. And although these mini solar storms are brief, they've brought us gorgeous aurora all over the world, like this from Sweden. We even saw some glow from the Norfolk, UK. We saw some gorgeous aurora in Fort Providence in the Northwest Territories. We also saw proton arcs in Big Valley, Alberta, and in central British Columbia. We saw gorgeous aurora in Saskatchewan. It even made it down into Maine, the United States. And we also saw some gorgeous reds in Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see that really dark coronal hole off to the edge of the screen there. That's beginning to rotate into Earth view right now. And it should be bringing us a good chance for some fast wind and maybe some sustained storm activity right around the 15th. Now, on top of that, we have all these other active regions, just kind of like the front side. It's kind of peppered with these regions, and there's a little bit of mini storm storms being spit off everywhere, so I don't expect the activity is going to change all that much. But you also see this other coronal hole, this kind of rectangular looking thing. This will be rotating into Earth view in about a week or so, and it could give us uh, some other, some more chance for fast wind in about two weeks. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are calming down from one of those mini solar storms, and it looks like we are grazing the edge of some fast wind. We keep popping in and out of it. So that's going to give us uh, about an unsettled conditions pretty much for the next few days. NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of a, a minor storm at high latitudes, but only about a 15 to 20% chance of uh, uh, active conditions at mid latitudes. Then around the 12th, we have that filament eruption I showed you earlier, that should be going northwest or northeast of us rather, and that should be giving us um, bumping up our, our possibility for storm conditions up to about a 30 to 35 percent chance of a minor storm at high latitudes and at mid latitudes, maybe about a 25 percent chance of activity. Still, nonetheless, we're expecting unsettled conditions until we get to about the 15th, and that's when we're hoping to see some of that fast wind from that southern coronal hole uh, actually give us some decent storm activity. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we really are very quiet, despite the fact that we are, have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. None of them are growing. None of them look like they're any M-flare players. NOAA's giving us only about a 5% chance of an M-class flare over the coming days, with it dropping down to about a 1% chance. So we really don't have any worries out there. So you amateur radio operators and GPS operators should be very happy. There's no issues in sight for you guys in terms of flares.
So this week activity looks to be pretty much unsettled. We've had a lot of mini solar storms that keep firing off to the west of us or to the east of us, but not a lot that's really in the Earth strike zone. So this means that we have had just tiny bits and pieces of aurora here and there, but not too much going on outside of that. We also are grazing the edge of some fast wind. We're popping kind of in and out of it, which again will just kind of keep us unsettled. So you amateur radio operators, you should kind of hear some noise on the bands, but hopefully it's not too much to prevent you from being able to have some decent communication. And you GPS operators are probably pretty happy because there's probably no disturbances at all for you. On top of that, we have a lot of activity on the disk in terms of uh, active regions, but not a lot of M flares or really any flare activity at all. And this should continue. So again, we're not seeing a whole lot going on, but things may change later in the week when we get a chance for some more fast wind that could give us some sustained activity. Till then, I guess we'll have to stay on our toes and keep watching the sun. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.